During the winter time, I sleep in a ton of different setups. During the summertime though, I am 100% a hammock dweller. I've got a bunch of different hammocks, I always circle back to one. Today we're gonna look at it, which I think is the ultimate hammock, it definitely is for me. We're gonna look at the Warbonnet Ridge Runner. I've got the main component here that's got the bug net and the actual hammock itself. I've got the spreader bars, which this is actually two full sets. So the top section comes in three pieces. The bottom section comes in two that slides inside two of the outer pieces. So the, the head side of the spreader bar is a little bit wider than the foot side. And then I've got a ridge line that we're going to use to hang our bug net. Okay, so right out the gate, one of the things you're going to have to know is uh, which way's up, which way's down. Uh, there is a head to the hammock and a foot to the hammock. I went through on mine and literally just hung a little glow-in-the-dark dog paw. This lets me know it's the foot of the hammock. So if you see that on there, that's all it is. Just lets me know. Back does cinch tight on both ends. Talk about a couple things. So I've had this hammock now for about five years. This is the old style bracket for the spreader bars. The new ones like my wife has, uh, this is all just a webbing loop right here. You, they got rid of this metal buckle here. Uh, still with the same lightweight sort of Dyneema-ish straps on it, uh, which I do really like. When I first saw them, I was like, there's no way this is going to hold me. This stuff is awesome. When you order these hammocks, one of the first things they're going to ask you is what kind of suspension system do you want. Uh, you can have it set up for, you know, like the actual straps. Uh, they've got a, a buckle system that comes with if you want to do just the, the straps that pull tight. Uh, you can have them set up for whoopee slings. You can have them set up for a couple different options. Uh, I initially took off the strap setup and then just put a carabiner on there and I use it with some atlas straps. I eventually moved over and the more I got into backpacking I actually replaced it with a little soft shackle here and right this minute everything is just tethered together and then I have a set of whoopee slings that I use so in there. We're going to use what I normally keep packed inside there which is just a pair of tree straps made out of Dyneema and we'll start with those and we'll probably, probably use the whoopees or something. So first and foremost I'm going to get these tethered around the tree. So I did order these from Warbonnet. Uh, you can get them with and without the fish hook extender on the end of it. Uh, I, I use them a little non-traditionally. I'm gonna go around the tree and then just hook my fish hook. So I come around the tree like this, hook the fish hook in. Now I've got one strap. So I'm gonna do that on the other side over here. I hang these. I like to hang them about eye level to start with because the hammock does kind of sag in. And that seems to put me at about the right, about the right height going forward. You can hear the thunder, it sounds wonderful. Unfortunately, the overwhelming majority of that is going south of us. Now hopefully I'm not gonna get lit up out here trying to do this. I look behind me at the clouds, a little rumbling going on in the background. We haven't had rain around my house since about June, and here we are in September. So at this point, I'm crossing my fingers, praying that it's actually gonna rain. Okay, so next up, I'm gonna use two tent stakes, one on either side, and that's what I'm gonna do my loop around for my webbing for my soft shackle. So if you wanna know how to use this, in conjunction with your hammock suspension. Try to remember to link it in the description below this little video that I did a while back, a little short, a little 60 second deal on this kind of quick release, quick detach for your hammock setup. I'll try to put it down there so you can see All right, it. So next up, I'm just gonna start stretching my hammock out and I'm gonna come down here, leaf down and find my soft shackle here because these trees are close enough that I'm probably not gonna actually have to use the whoopee slings. I think I can just go straight from the soft shackle. So I'm gonna thread it over even it out and then at that point at that point I'm just gonna grab the rest of my hammock out of the head side and I'm just gonna pull the stuff sack all the way to one side or the other it doesn't matter which way you pull it just as long as it goes to one so then I'm gonna look for the soft shackle on the head end pull it up here and do the exact same thing so now from here we need to take and get our spreader bars put in so I'm gonna go ahead and take the two feet spreaders out Go ahead and take the two spreaders for the foot out. These just lock into place. Now, 
This is probably the biggest area of weight in the hammock. Uh, that's probably expendable. I know you can get carbon fiber ones online. I think they're about a hundred bucks to get replacements for. They are typically a two-piece kit instead of this three-piece, so it's a little bit longer. Um, I, on the other hand, when I'm backpacking, I use my trekking poles for this. So I've kind of I've made some made some tweaks and fixes to the design over here, a little bit different, and added a little bit of hardware so that I can actually snap my tre trekking poles in there. And I may do a video on that later where it just actually replaces these spreader bars entirely. But now that I've got them pieced together, I'm gonna come through up here at the head of the hammock, shove one in, and there is actually a, uh, right here, a little shock cord. Right here, there's a little shock cord keeper in the very middle that you have to make sure to thread through. And that just holds the head of the hammock up close to this and doesn't let it sag down once you put your weight in there. It's going to look like this when it comes in. So your spreader bar just snaps into here, comes down. This is your shock cord. The other side looks the same way. And there's a little bit of a shelf inside here. Like it's woven a little bit tighter through here. Gives you not really a pillowing effect, but something a little bit closer to it. And it does leave a little weird pocket up here, which I like because I normally put my cell phone and stuff up here and it makes it easy to find. Do the exact same thing on my foot. So I'm just going to stick these together. Now, down here on this end, on mine, there isn't a, that middle sort of shock cord piece. So we're just going to go into the foot, spread it apart, and pop it in here. Okay, so you're gonna, you'll notice I've got a handful of things going on here. I really need to adjust this hammock, one, so that the foot is a little bit higher than the head, because otherwise I'm going to wake up sleeping in the bottom of it. But truthfully, when I settle in, most of my weight's going to be here, and it will sag more on this end than you think it will. And it'll level out some. I do need to drop it down up here a little bit. Or pick it up down here a little bit. But regardless. Okay, so a few more features before we move forward. On both sides, you've got huge saddlebags down the side. And this is where I usually put like all my pocket stuff in the, in the evenings when I'm getting ready to settle in. And there's another shallow one up here. So I'll usually put... Um, I usually put like camp shoes. One on one side and one on the other. Because you do have those saddlebags on both sides. And so I usually put camp shoes up in the front or you know, my socks or something if I want to worry about my feet getting cold. And then everything else sort of in these big, huge ones. And they are ample. I mean, you could easily put a basketball inside here. Uh, they're surprisingly big. You've got a good-sized foot box. And then you'll also notice down here my bug net, which is really rough. I kind of threw that together the last time I put it up. Uh, it all just tethers down at the end. So it unzips on three sides all the way around and stows down here so there's no way to remove the bug net if you order it with the bug net on there but it does stow down here and stays out of the way pretty good and that's actually what hooks it to this pole told you that there's no shock cord down there there's not and that's because it's all integrated into here and storing your bug net now another option I'm up at the head of the hammock now we could do it at the foot so another option they're going to ask you when you order this hammock do you want single layer or double layer I opt for the double layer because if I need to, I can put a sleep pad down here or just something if I'm sleeping in colder weather to kind of keep me warm. Or, and at the same time, mosquitoes are horrible in Texas. Sometimes I put just a sheet of Tyvek in there to keep the mosquitoes from biting me through the hammock. So now, if I want to put the bug net up, I need to put up a ridge line. This is one additional piece that you have to always consider if you're going to use it. All right, so the ridge line's up. Now we need to go over here and get our foot box bug net unhooked and it's just two little lacing straps here pull those loose releases on either side now I made some modifications to this because in the older style hammock like this they didn't have them I was pleased to see on my wife's hammock that they did go through and subsequently fix those and I'll walk you through those as well let's continue to come around the horn here and zip it all up we'll stop it about right there and we'll pull this one too as well When you buy this hammock, the old style used to come with this just one little small ring, and it all was set and tethered on the outside, and there was nothing inside it to actually hang an internal ridge line. So what I did was I actually nicked into the bug netting here just a little bit and put a split ring through there on this side and that side, and then put this yellow inner ridge line inside there. 
so that I could hang stuff. Now, that is actually what they've replaced. So now there's not just a small ring. They've actually put a larger one in that goes all the way through the inside and outside. It doesn't come with the ridge line, but they've set it up so that it's much easier to add it. So now I'm just going to grab the shock cord down at the foot and set up with a little tensioner on here. I just put a little night eyes hook on it just to make it easier. Pull it up, hook it to my prosthetic knot up here, smooth it out. I can adjust the tension here if I need to. Do not make this overly tight when you first set it up because when you get in, it's going to sag. And if your ridge line is tight, it's not going to give and it'll actually pull your pull your netting and stuff loose at the bottom. I have seen people tear those. Come up here, do the exact same thing at the head. And then I just pull it tight to snug it up. So in case you notice it, I do have a little small headlamp lantern inside here at the head on my ridge line that I'll turn on and off. And I have gone through and I'll hang my, I did a review on a Smart Devil fan the other day. I used this two weeks ago uh, in the hammock and I hung it right up here. It was awesome. The thing kept me cool all night long. It's gonna be my go-to now for the summer times. So you can get this hammock with another feature, which I do have that I put on during the winter if I'm planning on sleeping in it. So you can stow the bug net back down in the foot and they have a sleeve, they call it the spin drift, which is about another 120 bucks, I think, for the whole setup. Uh, which by the way, these you can buy these substantially cheaper around the holidays. So Black Friday, they run a significant sale. Uh, they run a, a pretty good one around Memorial Day too, I believe. And actually that spin drift sleeve looks just like this. Now, I love this hammock and gravitate toward it during the summertime because with it being a bridge hammock instead of a gathered end, it lays much more flat because I sleep like I'm in a rotisserie, so I sit and I roll so I can sleep on both sides, I can sleep on my back, I can sleep on my chest, and can just sit and kind of roll in it. But without, without it being gathered in, you guys can actually see it going on right now because we have a little bit of a breeze. You get a ton of air coming across you that's not cut off by the material on your side. So you actually sleep much cooler that way. Okay, so the specs for the hammock are as follows. According to the website, the hammock is sized for people up to six foot six inches tall. And the weight capacity depends on whether or not it's a single layer or double layer. Uh, single being up to 200 pounds, double being up to 250. Uh, they say that people over 250 just find that it, it causes more of a shoulder squeeze, so it's, it's less comfortable for people heavier than that. Um, you can order this in a 30D or a 40D for the material. And the prices are gonna run based on on the configuration and what all the options are, anywhere from 130 to up to $265 right this minute. And that does not include the spin drift. The spin drift alone sells for like 120, if you wanna look into that. The hammock weight itself, the bars alone weigh 12 ounces, which is why I liked to replace those with my trekking poles. Uh, whether or not you get a net or not is the next big weight factor. And so on the low end, single or double, uh, you can get that under one pound with no net, but if you add the net on, you're going to be anywhere from one pound, four ounces to about one pound, nine ounces with the net and the double layering. Okay, guys, hopefully you enjoyed that and picked up a couple nuggets. If you're really curious about the, the Warbonnet Ridge Runner, I'll throw a link to their website below. If you're in the market for a hammock and you're not really sure what to get, you know, with a lot of things, just like a lot of things, uh, there's a preference that you know what works for me may not work for you for me this has been absolutely the perfect hammock uh, i know a lot of people love the blackbird i really couldn't ever get comfortable in it um, i know a lot of people love the hennessy hammocks i could not decipher the asim sleep i think i moved around too much i could never get comfortable in it um, this thing has been perfect for me could it be perfect for you absolutely could you hate it quite possibly i think it's awesome um, so if you definitely, if you catch me out on the trail during the summer backpacking, it's in this. If you're out on the trail right now, kind of like Topo and I are, just remember as always, left foot, right foot, repeat. We'll see you soon.